Okay, so let's just take a look at this. You said in a, in a video the other day, and you can look me in the eye, you said that you, <laughs> you said in a video. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna start with that, yeah? Yeah. It's recording, okay. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Brothers and sisters, hope you are all doing well. Welcome, uh, if uh, anybody is new to the channel, I'm here with the champ himself. Mashallah. How you doing? We, 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 <laughs> we just watched the whole interaction tonight. First things first, how did you find it? Well, um, I think it was... How did you find it? I, look, the thing is, I know if I start speaking because I've got the truth on my side. That's all it is. Of course. Um, I've got the truth on my side. Allah has put the truth in my way. If I start speaking, they can't handle it. They can't handle the truth. Which is why the interruption started to come in. Statistically, if you look at the actual kind oh, of interruptions... Man, there were so many interruptions. It, it was incessant interruptions. In the beginning, I mean, to be honest with you, before we even started this thing, bro, like, yeah. we, um, I was saying to them, this is, I could see this is not going to work. Why? Mm -hmm. And I had this whole conversation with them and had back and forth. As in with the producers of the show. Producers of the show. I said to them, mm -hmm. look, you see, if you want to do a proper, because they said Oxford style debate, that's what they said to me in the email. That like, was not if you want an Oxford style <laughs> debate, then you need to give me five minutes and him five minutes and me five minutes and him five minutes and something like that. Then he can, then he can ask some questions or it could be like yeah, this yeah, yeah, yeah what they said to me is no you you'll have a maximum of a minute or something to that effect you'll have a maximum of a minute yeah they didn't actually stick to the structure that they said they were going to do mm -hmm. and so the, the structure of it being like a minute uninterrupted a minute uninterrupted that's not good enough for an hour or an hour 15 minute kind of debate because that's four minutes out of an hour 15 yes they should be at least 10 minutes each uninterrupted. Yeah. So, I mean, Piers Morgan come out and saying, oh, this is this and that. But he, he wanted it like that. I spoke to his producers and I said to them, this is going to end up being interruption. Because and how can you speak for one minute? And make yeah, a I said, if, you point, wanna, if you want an Oxford debate, yeah. then you're going to have to do a proper, like me speaking for five minutes, him speaking for five minutes. And mm -hmm. when, I, when, I was, when he was speaking, mm -hmm. I was quiet. And for the most part, when I was speaking for the minute, he was quiet. He's capable of that mm -hmm. because we saw him in the Oxford Union mm -hmm. against Christopher Hitchens. He, mm -hmm. he had a debate, by the way, this guy with Christopher Hitchens back in the day, like 20 years ago or something like that. Yeah. He's capable of that. I'm capable of that. Of course, yeah. But I think what happened is they knew that I had the charismatic advantage and I had the, uh, the articulation advantage. Yes. I think they did know that. Indeed, yeah. If you give me 60 seconds... A lot of damage can be done. Bro, to be honest with you, I'm not just saying it because you're here and you're my friend or whatever and stuff like that. But like, if anyone watched the debate for the first time, actually, some of you may not even know who Rabbi Shmoli is. Yeah. In in the Jewish community, he's actually quite a respected figure. He's been around for a long time. I mean, he, it was the Orthodox, you know? they, they reject this guy. They I mean, communicate. But like, he's been around. He's popular. He's, he's, he's popular. He's yeah. been around for a very long time, mm. um, even in the debate scene. Some people may watch the debate and think it's his first time debating. <laughs> that's that's how well, he was he was actually trembling like he, and he was I mean, even no, even see, you know, i don't point. know if anyone saw but his hands were like this yeah he's no they were actually were like this <laughs> and from the moment he saw me yeah. he started trying to suck up to me yeah asking me about my family and stuff like that uh trying to be nice to me and so good and, and all that kind of stuff. yeah and he he's trying mm. to suck up to me bro like of all due respect your son is in the idf you're shaking hands with Netanyahu. you're talking about this you're talking about that you're justifying you want, me to, you want me to be good with you? The fact that we're even having a conversation with you is a... Bro, you know, it's not even a conversation. Yeah, like, it's like a, it is what it is. Like, yeah. I'm going to go hard on you, bro. Yeah, and that's all yeah, it is. You've yeah. got to expect that. When you see me, you better start swinging because I'm going to start swinging intellectually because at the end of the day, that's all I'm there for. There's, I'm there for. there's one point, yeah, I wanted to focus on, and which is, you know, Israel on a general level, uh, the way that they've been basically pushing out their propaganda is they paint themselves as figures of democracy in the Middle East. We are the only democratic nation in the Middle East. Uh, we are the fighters of freedom in the Middle East. Even Shmoli expressed it in yeah, the debate yeah, yeah. that, you know, this is the only place where Palestinian women can and Arab women can walk freely in the Middle East. Yeah. When in the same video, which is really, you know, it's a bit interesting in the same in the same interaction, he's actually uh, praising you know, the rulers of Dubai and stuff like that. And the same one, he's taking a dig at them, right? Um, so this is this is an idea that they push, which is, you know, we are, you know, the givers of freedom, etc. We are not an apartheid state. When the reality is, when we look at the situation in the West Bank, and we look at the situation in Gaza, and we look, for example, the Gazans cannot go in and out freely as they would like to. We look at the West Bank, there is no Hamas in the West Bank. And we see people being, you know, being being put through really bad you know things in the west bank as well you know many people have actually died 
since October the 7th, we see thousands of Gazan workers actually sacked by the Israelis ever since October the 7th. Okay, and some are describing that move as collective punishment. Essentially, why are you sacking all of these Gazan workers? And, and, and now the Israeli Builders Association is basically mentioning, we're going to be, you know, where they're going to bring builders in from? From India. Mm. Mentioning things like you've this. got you've made a report so, on that and uh, yeah, on so the, the people they can check all of what's this. The, stuff what's, the, what's the news uh, thing that we started, bro? Like because they don't know about it. What's the yeah, news thing so, that we started? So, so we've started this. Uh, this uh, it's a news platform. We yeah. do social commentary, news Musa analysis. Musa is doing a fantastic job every day. If you haven't okay. subscribed to it already, you have to do it. Yes, critical content. The thing news. is, we feel like what can we do like to affect change? That's yeah. the question. We can do debates here and there. We can go to Piers Morgan's yeah. show. We can do that. We can challenge the people. We can do demonstrations and stuff. But really. A lot of it is to do with public opinion, and a lot of it is to do with good research, and yes. that's why we've actually got a research team now. Yes. This has been pri this has been privately funded. Like we've got people working with us, we've got mm -hmm. editors and stuff. We haven't asked, and we at this we haven't asked p the public for for funds. Yes, do you know what I mean? Because it's an independent project. It's an independent know? project. Yeah, we're doing it. You know, we've got our own studio, and we're disseminating information. This man here to my right, he's doing a fantastic job because every day he's filming a video which another researcher is making a package for him, which he's spending hours to try and, um, you know, get that package. And he's researching that package and giving it to Musa. Musa is coming out and doing the, the work. We've got a website, critical content, yes. uh, news. Uh, is it .org? It's .org, right? I'm not sure, actually. I think it's, let me just double check it, but we've got, yeah, we've got all the articles YouTube. on it. I'm using the YouTube. It's critical yeah. content, uh, news.org we'll check it we'll check we'll give it to you right now but yeah look this is the point and this is the point one of the points that i wanted to get across from this video uh is the point that you know and all of these things you can check them in detail these some of these points that i'm mentioning on the critical content channel um but these are the type of points that we discuss and we highlight that even though israel is putting themselves themselves across they're putting themselves across as you know this uh, this bastion of freedom in the yeah, middle dot east com, et cetera. it's critical content news dot com dot com so and, even uh, though we've just we've just actually updated the interface. Yeah, yeah. Can, I don't Great. know if I, I didn't even, I didn't tell you about this. No, you didn't. We int we we updated the interface. Was, there was okay. like it wasn't good. So the video, as you can oh, see, your stuffs nice. are on there. Very nice, bro. CritterContentNews dot com. Yeah, you know it now. Yeah. We've got the website. We've got this man doing the videos every every other day or like five times a week. Yeah, we've got reports. We've got articles every day because this is what we need. Everything is referenced. We've got bibliography. So this is an information war. As yes. much as anything else, you have to get the facts right, you know. And if we get the facts right and it's researched and it's backed and it's voracious and it's peer reviewed, which is what we're trying to do, then at the end of the day, nothing beats a good argument. And do not undermine your role in all of this. Your role in all of this is supporting, you know, us to do this work, essentially, by following, subscribing, even yeah. liking tweets. It yeah. gets the tweet more out there, etc. You know, you may think it's small, it does nothing, but it, it makes a big massive difference. difference massive, massive difference. Massive difference. Even, the, even critical content, keep watching, keep sharing with your family yeah. members. It's very well produced, mashallah. The media team is doing an excellent job. You are you doing know, an excellent job know, as well, bro. Thank you very much, brother. Brilliant. I, 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 I never knew you had I know. that. <laughs> I, know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I never knew you had um, it in you, bro. This because you were doing this kind of like yeah. uh, Islamic uh, student of knowledge stuff. I thought, okay, that's oh, it. I brother, mean, we but the capable. versatility wasn't there. We are capable. But of then I realized things. this man is dynamic. I mean, he just came into the you know the scene. He became a news reporter. I started. This guy's amazing. And trust me, guys, if you see his news reporting skills, bro, brilliant charisma. You know, articulation. Uh, he's got the the points on. He memorizes all the points. He memorizes all the statistics. If you like, honestly, this is the most probably one of the best outlets now for independent news especially on the palestine issue critical content news dot com critical content news because it's critical and it's content and it is content and it's <laughs> news dot com and you've got and yeah. there's a youtube page youtube page and Look, they should be we're on twitter we're on instagram yeah. instagram at critical content news yeah. follow us there we post the reels and the shorts and stuff like that for the short form content yes and follow us on our social media as well. Any last words, brother, for the for the people? Oh, that's man? it. So, um, with the Shmoli, unholy Shmoli. Shmoli. Yeah, honestly, that guy, um, I don't think he had it coming, but what, you know, Piers Morgan, I'm a little, I admire him a little bit. For what? After getting rocked the first time, he came in the second time he wanted who, to get... Piers Morgan, yeah? Piers Morgan. Mm -hmm. And he don't mind getting rocked again. So, I don't know what it is, but it's, you're never going to win against the truth. That's the truth. I, 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 That's the truth. I respect Piers Morgan for bringing on people who... Yeah, no, no, that... Yeah, and we shouldn't be too you know, harsh with him because yeah, he's slowly you know. coming on our side. 
But at the same time, yeah. you can put pressure on him because, yeah, like, yeah. he's he's now condemned the settlements. Good. Yes. He needs to. Condemn and by the way, apartheid. he stuck by that. Yeah, he did. He stuck by it, even need, when you said it. He didn't. To, he didn't backtrack. We need to pressure him on apartheid because yeah, yeah. that is. And do you know how you pressure him on it? Explain how it makes him a, a sympathizer of racism, on Twitter and other places. Yes, apartheid is an impossible case. Trust you saw it. You saw it in the debate. It's unbelievable. Apar apartheid and then the hundred to one ratio. I'm just gonna because we realize that the arguments need to be sh short and sweet. Hundred to one ratio argument, which is the Gaza argument, the apartheid argument, the collective punishment argument. The collective punishment argument. And if yeah. you want the f terrorism argument, these are yes. the best. Now you would have noticed, by the way, just one more, one more thing. I didn't engage with genocide or ethnic cleansing. Do you know why? It's not because I don't believe there's a genocide going on mm -hmm. or that there's or no ethnic, ethnic cleansing. cleansing. Yeah. It's because in international law, mm -hmm. the, the evidentiary bar mm -hmm. that is required to prove those things is extremely, exceedingly mm -hmm. high. Mm -hmm. So if someone's good with, um, with international law, yeah. they'll say, okay, but this is what qu qualifies to be a yeah. genocidal thing. And then thing. they can just and then, no, no, and then they'll drag you into a technical debate. And undermine your point. Now, there's a difference yeah. between these terms being used, okay, genocide and uh, ethnic cleansing, yeah. in a vernacular sense, mm -hmm. in, a, in a dictionary definition sense. Yes. You can use those terms, yeah, no problem. Mm -hmm. But if you're going down the international law arguments, yeah, yeah which is what we're effectively, because that's the only tool which would can moderate the situation at the moment and cause public opinion. I mean, to change. we're not speaking to Muslims. You yeah, understand? yeah, of that's course not. Thing. I mean, we're, speaking yeah. to, uh, we're yeah. not doing we're not doing taqdis of we're not saying there's a holy law. Like, you get yeah, me? We don't, yeah. We're using it instrumentally. We don't think this is a holy law. Yeah. It's a perfect law. We're using it instrumentally. But what I'm saying is that you, if you make the argument of ethnic cleansing mm -hmm. and genocide in in international law context. Mm -hmm. A seasoned debater will drag you into that and complicate that. So what I'm saying is, mm -hmm. the strongest I found, the strongest argument, collective punishment, undoubtedly, because the definition of collective punishment is clear. Mm -hmm. Apartheid, very clear, because the, the definition is clear. Number three, terrorism, mm -hmm. at least the, the UN definition. Yes. Certainly, certainly. Like, how could that not apply to the IDF? Uh, and the hundred to one, I'm going to call it the hundred to one argument, which is the the, the ratio argument. Those four things in combination, you'll beat anyone debate because there's, there's no way you can lose unless unless you don't know what you're talking about. Yes. There's no, these arguments are unstoppable arguments. They're bulletproof arguments. That they are impervious or they're unsusceptible to counter counterattacks. And this is probably why people like Ant Antonio Guterres, who is actually um, you know one of the UN representatives, okay. Um, he actually mentioned that the fact, you know, about the civilian deaths in Gaza, mm -hmm. something is clearly wrong, right? Of course. And because of this, Gilad Erdan, who is actually the ambassador for Israel at the UN, he's been calling for, for, for Antonio Guterres to resign, right? Actively for him to resign. Why are you saying things like this, etc.? So you have UN officials even yeah. saying things yeah. like this, right? It's very, very important for us to be aware of these things, for us to internalize these things and, and, and discuss things. Saying free Palestine, wearing the you know the scarf, etc., one is one thing. Okay, it's a good thing. You're trying your best, but also educate yourself because you that will give you power if, if in these conversations. If you get into debates and stuff, yeah, 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 you always have to think of it as if statements and conditionals. Yeah. Like, but if he says this, I say that. If this, I say that. Yeah. If this, I say that. what's the what's the what is the path of least resistance? Yeah. What's the quickest way I can land the the uh, the hook? Mm -hmm. That's why I wouldn't get involved in certain things, and, and you, I don't know if people would notice, but my answer on terrorism was very well I thought about it well before yeah and that I think is the best answer to condition it because once again uh, if they have certain idea of what terrorism is then you have to apply it across the board by the way I didn't mention this and I should mention this here okay. that the majority of countries do not see Hamas as a terrorist organization you know there's countries in Europe that don't see Hamas as a terrorist organization the majority of countries are Switzerland doesn't Norway doesn't and guess what Ukraine doesn't so even if you look at the, the majority of countries uh, scenario, the majority of countries don't see them as a terrorist organization. That's a fact. That is just a fact. So the, you can make a legal case. You can look at the international, uh, international sphere or yeah. scene or whatever you like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can make a moral case the way I like to do using Rosalind Higgins, as I mentioned in the debate, that she says it's a useless term. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm adding to that, that it's a social construct. It's a social construct. A social construct. Yeah. We, don't, we don't have any moral epistemological or moral or objective moral designation for this term. Mm -hmm. Effectively, all you need to remember is neo-colonial social construct. Full words. That yeah. terrorism is a neo-colonial social construct. And it is. And why is it? Because when the white man shoots, or uh, the Western ally shoots, it's kills, it's not terrorism. It's, I mean, can uh, you just imagine... Defense. It's defense. Can you just imagine for one second... <laughs> One sec, just for one second, and we saw an example yeah. of it, right? Where we had, uh, you know, you know, this narrative in the West that Russia, 
We're all against Russia. How yeah, can yeah. Russia, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I- invade a democratic society? How yeah. can they? How yeah. can they invade Ukraine? Yeah. Right? But they didn't actually tell you the amount of people that actually the amount of countries in the UN Assembly yeah. that voted, you know, that abstained from voting to condemn Russia. Exactly. To condemn Russia's invasion. Mm. So this is the thing. So can you just imagine what if? Can you imagine if one Muslim country had done what Israel has done in the last? month or so can you imagine what the internet there would be outcry international outcry. Have, you have, people have yeah. killed over four thousand children yeah you've killed over ten thousand people many of them the majority of them overwhelming majority of them innocent people videos coming out pictures coming out can you imagine what the response would be on an in, international level what anthony blinken you know and, and and all of these guys john kirby all of these guys coming mm. out of the u.s joe biden who by the way he's Make barely he, he, he's barely good able point. to walk He's barely <laughs> able to talk. Half the time, he looks like Bit he's like high. Yeah. Bit like he looks like he's high half the time. Yeah. He looks like he doesn't know where he is. Yeah. I don't understand how people respect this man, Joe Biden. He looks like he's about to, to, to you know, collapse any second. Mm-hmm. Okay. But this is the situation at hand. So we need to educate ourselves. We need to keep watching. We don't want to, you know, la nuridu an nutawil alaykum. We don't want to make this longer than it needs to be, inshallah. Any last words? No, bro, that's it. I'm, that's I'm, it yeah? What I'm saying is, guys, make sure that you subscribe to Creative Content News. Go on the website, share the articles. We need your support. We don't need your money. We need your support. We just need your support. Follow, share, push it in your family, WhatsApp groups. Essentially, watch the content. It's, it's, it's high quality recorded content. And it's actually very informative and educational. We, we bring a lot of sources. We bring you all of that. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you. Assalamu Subscribe. Shocking. Okay.